Hey, fatty! This fucking piece of shit's finally working. Fuck. Okay, so tonight, I'm gonna do a crash course on the snake diet, so fucking listen up. This is for all you people that don't subscribe. Fuck. This is all for all you people that don't subscribe to my fucking YouTube channel. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's called Snake Diet. So we're going to start from the bare, bare, bare minimum. Okay, so you're a fat ass or you're sick or whatever and you want to start the snake diet. First thing, you're going to start by going and buying two fucking salts at the grocery store. You're going to buy sodium chloride, pink salt, Himalayan pink salt. It's going to have lots of minerals in it. It's good salt. You're going to buy potassium chloride. Okay? Powder. Potassium chloride fucking powder. Not the fucking tablets. Not any of that shit. Powder. Now you got those two salts. This is the minimum to start this shit. Okay? The minimum. Okay? There's two types of fasting I preach. Dry fasting and salt water fasting. Snake juice is the salt water. Dry means dry. Exactly what it says. You don't put nothing in your fucking mouth. Then you want to make sure you have a good water source. Something that's got a pH of higher than 7. pH is not fucking alkalinity. pH is pH. Alkalinity is the dissolved solids in the water. You want the dissolved solids to be like 120 or better optimally. But if you're fucking poor, you can use fucking tap water. Just understand there's shit in the tap water. Your little fucking Brita system's not going to take the shit out of the fucking tap water. Okay, so get water and get the two salts and start fasting. Fasting means not eating. That's it. Okay, you don't eat. You don't chew fucking gum. You don't fucking put anything in your fucking mouth except that salt water or dry. Now, depending what type of person you are, if you're, a, if you're your average fat ass, you just go as long as you fucking can without eating. Okay, you go as long as you can. Now, that being said... Don't tell me, oh, the longest I could go is fucking 10 hours. Like, shut the fuck up. When I say go as long as you can, I'm talking like fucking long, like days. Okay, days. As long as you can. Now, here's how it works. Okay, here's how it works. Here's why you can fast so long. When you're fucking fat. You're forcing ketosis. What this means is basically you have a fucking organ called a liver. Okay, this liver holds glycogen. When you fast, normally your liver is going to use glycogen. Your body's going to use glycogen from your liver for energy and glycogen in your muscles. But I don't need to get into the muscle part yet. The liver glycogen is what de is the deciding factor of ketosis. If you got glycogen in your fucking liver, you're not going to be in ketosis. Okay, listen to me about ketosis. I know everything about fucking ketosis. I'm the ketosis fucking expert. You know why? Because I've done crazy, crazy long fasts and I know exactly how the fucking body reacts. These fucking numbskulls on YouTube that say that it takes three days and shit to get into ketosis, four days, five days, are idiots because they have no fucking experience. Listen to me. So it takes about, <clears throat> depending on how fast your metabolism is, the type of fasting you're doing, whether it's dry or on snake juice, It'll take maximum 48 fucking hours to get into ketosis. What this means is when you start fasting, you're not eating, you're going to start depleting that liver glycogen down. And your liver will hold about 100, 100 grams of glycogen, which is about 400 calories worth of glycogen, really, which isn't that much. Your body's going to chew down that liver glycogen. When it gets low on liver glycogen, your body's got to make this shift into fat burning mode, okay? That's when your body's like, holy fuck, I don't get any fucking sugar left. I don't got no sugar to burn. I have to burn this fucking half a million calories of body fat now. So what we're doing is you're putting your body in a state where we force the motherfucker to fucking eat your body fat. It's this simple. Okay, this is the whole fucking thing to this. This is why this works so fucking good. Things that'll, so you got snake juice and dry fasting. You got the two salts. Your body needs lots of potassium and lots of sodium. That's why we use those two fucking salts. There's a million supplements out there, okay? I have people all the time like, what about this? What about this? 
There's a lot of supplements that won't break your fast, okay? There's other salts, there's etc. But I dumb it down because I don't want you to fucking die. Because people are idiots and they'll fucking start hammering back other shit and fuck themselves up, okay? There's even crazy shit out there like fucking borax that you can fucking actually take, which I will not fucking tell you fucking if... I shouldn't even have mentioned that. But fucking borax people think will fucking kill them. Okay, but there's, you can even knock that back. But we're talking about two salts. Potassium chloride, sodium chloride. Start your fucking fast tonight. Okay, eat a meal, start your fast. Don't eat a meal, start your fast. Fucking start right now. Doesn't fucking matter. Just start fasting. Salt water. Now to mix it up. The ad, now here's where I'll go through all the different fucking scenarios and types of people and all sorts of shit. So you're starting your fucking fast, okay? You might not even have your salts. Okay, that's fine. Just get them tomorrow. You can go fucking a while without them. Okay, but get them. When you start your fast, the amount of water, it's going to be different for fucking everybody. That's why I always have people, what's the recipe? What's the recipe? There's no fucking recipe. Grab a two liter fucking bottle of water. And here's the thing. If you're super active, okay, let's say that you're like super active, and obviously if you're super active, you're not going to be that fat anyway, okay, I mean super active. So let's say your goal is more for health reasons and you want to still cut weight, get into the lifestyle, you know, reduce inflammation, fucking heal all your allergies, all this other shit. If you're active, a good starting point is going to be, say, mix up two liters of water with maybe one and a half teaspoons of each of those salts. So the potassium chloride and the sodium chloride, one and a half teaspoons. Now there's gonna be some half salts and shit out there. If you're using those, you gotta do the fucking math on them. I'm not gonna do the math on here for you. I'm talking if you got fucking sodium chloride in one bottle, potassium chloride in the other. Okay? As much as maybe two teaspoons of each. That's the top fucking end for like a fucking goddamn athlete that fucking drinks maybe two liters, two and a half liters, maybe even three liters of water in the day. Starting point. Okay? You're going to have to figure this out. If you get the shits, cut the salt back. If you feel like you're fucking dehydrated, usually a telltale sign if you get a fucking really nasty headache and your ketone strips, your keto sticks, measure the ketones because they're breaking down body fat. We get a side... A byproduct called ketones. That's where we're getting all the fucking energy from, okay? We're breaking down fat. We're breaking down fat. We got a whole bunch of free fatty acids and fucking basically triglycerides in your fucking bloodstream, okay? And then those get used. Those go to the liver and the liver makes ketones. And then we use fucking ketones for energy. So then you're going to piss out excess ketones. So that's why you get these ketone strips. Now, if your strips are super dark and you feel great, fine. That's fine. Keep going. If you feel good, keep going. Okay? I don't care about anything else. I don't care if you went and got blood tests and the doctor says your fucking triglyceride levels are high or your cholesterol numbers are out of whack. If you feel good, go. I don't care about your fucking stupid fucking mainstream blood tests. If you feel good, keep fucking fasting. You're all fucked up right now. The reason you're starting this is because you're unhealthy and fucked up. Go, you've been doing it for like a fucking day, two days, three days. Keep fucking going. Now these ketone strips. Okay, you piss on these fucking ketones. You piss in a cup and dip the strip. If you piss on the strip, sometimes the reading will be fucked up. And it shows you that you're not fucking up your fast with bubble gum, fucking your stupid fucking artificial sweeteners, your fucking stupid zero calorie sweetened fucking drinks. Don't drink any of that. Fucking water and fucking salt. Cayenne pepper you can throw in there. It's not going to kick you out of fat burning mode. Okay? And like I said, there's lots of things you can fucking throw in there that aren't going to kick you out of fat burning mode, but we're dumbing it the fuck down. Because a lot of people have, say, detox effects, withdrawals. If you fucking have a million things in your fucking goddamn... Say if you had fucking some snake juice and you threw some other shit in it that's not going to break your fast. Well, you don't know what's causing the problem. Dumb it the fuck down. If you want to be a real expert, once you get ripped and lean, you can fucking make your own fucking snake juice up. Okay, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Just listen to me if you're a fat ass and do what I fucking say. So these ketone strips are measuring basically the ketones now because we forced your body into ketosis because we're fasting our fucking bag off, liver glycogen zero. 
Liver glycogen zero. Now we're burning fucking body fat to get energy. Okay? Now the way it works, your ketones, a lot of fucking mainstream ketogenic diet dumbasses, fucking monkeys, they think that your body's going to absorb ke all these ketones once you get fat adapted, they call it, and you're not going to show any ketones on your strips. Fucking bullshit. They don't know a fucking thing about fasting. When you're fasting fucking straight through, straight through, so you're only drinking snake juice or dry, you're going to be in excess on ketones right till you break the fucking fast. Because there's no hormone that'll put the brakes on the ketone production. You're, you're like literally breaking down more fat than you even need. That's the beauty. You're like literally pissing out fucking fat once you're fucking in ketosis. Your body's not even using it all up. Your body's not even using all the ketones. Okay? Fucking vitamins. You don't need any of it. Fuck. Don't ask me questions about all the extra shit you can take. You don't need any of it. Okay? Now, obviously, there's other fucking protocols when I'm coaching people one-on-one -on -one behind the scenes when I got somebody with cancer, things like this. Maybe I'll have them fucking knock back some vitamin C powder. Okay? Maybe. Okay, that's, that's fucking specific to that person. There is shit out there that's fucking good for cancer on top of the fasting. Okay? If you have all your fucking organs, you don't need any medications. If you have all your fucking organs... If the doctor doesn't cut your fucking thyroid out of your head because you didn't even need it cut out. All you had to do is fucking fast. Your thyroid also is fucked up because you got fat and you fucking don't fast. Do you understand how serious this fucking fasting thing is? As soon as you're spiking your insulin all day, when you fast, your insulin's low. As soon as you spike it all day long, your insulin's high, you have crazy inflammation problems. You can't heal when your insulin's high. Okay? So that's how you start this. You fucking go get those two salts. You get water and you start fasting. That's it. It's that simple. The ketones will be the side effect. That's the energy source. The ketones are the fucking energy source. Okay? That is it. That is fucking it. You fat asses just need to fast as long as you can. Now we'll get into the refeeds, which most of you don't fucking need for days. But obviously you need to know what to eat when you do have to eat. We're trying to lose weight. The pe this is for the people that are trying to lose fucking weight as fast as they can. Now, if you absolutely need a fucking refeed, after, say, five days of fasting, maybe you just feel like shit. The only time I get people to refeed when they're fucking fasting straight through is if they literally feel like complete fucking shit. It's like this little reset where we'll have a refeed, then we'll get right back into it. The refeed is chicken shit. It's tiny. It's fucking vegetables and a chunk of meat. No fucking sugar. No fucking sugar. Because the goal is, when we refeed, there's going to be a certain amount of calories there that we're going to have to burn up before we start burning our body fat again. So the less we eat, the better. Now, this is where the macros matter. You got three macros. You got fat, carbs. You got fat, fucking carbohydrates, and protein. Okay? Our meal that we're having better be fucking low as fuck on carbs. Because guess what carbs do? They refill that liver glycogen. And what happens when I said at the start of this fucking video? The fucking sole decider of if you're in fucking fat burning mode is if your fucking liver is empty of glycogen. So when we eat carbs and we put fucking glycogen back in our liver, guess what? We just pause the fuck out of our fat burning mode even once our bodies chewed up the calories from our little chicken shit fucking refeed. We paused the fat burning mode until that fucking glycogen's gone. So even if you ate a small meal that was like, say, 500 calories after you fasted for five fucking days, if it was straight fucking sugar, even though the calories were low, you just kicked yourself out of ketosis for like 24 fucking hours. So that's just a whole day of fat burn we've lost out on. Okay? That's a whole day of fat burn. And all, you're always going to be more catabolic if you can't stay in fat burning mode and you're at a caloric deficit. This is why Weight Watchers fucking blows. Okay? Any diet that you always have to be at a caloric deficit to lose fucking weight. That's a fucking fact. Okay? I made a fucking post about this. It's all about, it's all about eating frequency, macros, calories. Optimally, Eating frequency you want fucking super low. I'm talking like, say, a meal a month. That would be low. 
Six meals a day is high. That's junk. Anything fucking multiple meals in a day is junk. Okay? Eating frequency, that's fucking number one. Secondly, you got your macros. So optimally for fat burn, we want a fucking low eating frequency and we want our macros to be no carbs. Because no carbs will keep, keep our liver glycogen low and then we're always in fat burning mode. But we're not going to be in body fat burning mode until we get rid of the fucking calories from our meal. This is why mainstream ketogenic diets are trash when you eat all fucking day. Because you can easily get fat eating fat. Because that's fucking exogenous fat. We want to use our fucking fat out of our body. So you got eating frequency. You got fucking macros. Basically the main thing to know there is the carbs you want low as fuck. Thirdly, you got calories. You want those as low as fuck if you're trying to lose weight. Okay? Now the best scenario is going to be not eating. Because guess what? Not eating. We got an eating frequency that is as low as humanly possible. We got macros that are zero. And we got calories that are zero. Okay, that's why fucking this is the best fat loss motherfucking diet in the face of the planet. Pretty simple. Three things. See, the mainstream, as you believe, that the only thing that matters is fucking the really mainstream, the really mainstream, as you believe, the only thing that fucking matters is calories in, calories out. They're a bunch of idiots. As soon as you fucking are eating at a caloric deficit and you're eating all day, spiking your insulin, you're catabolic as fuck, which means you're going to burn muscle mass like a motherfucker. So that's why Weight Watchers is trash. That's why pretty much every diet out there that you're running a caloric deficit, eating multiple meals a day is trash. Then you got your macros people, which is a little better, like say your mainstream keto people, at least they know that macros matter. They know that you want to be low carb in it, so at least you keep yourself in fat burning mode, but then a lot of them don't give a fuck about calories. And they don't care about eating frequency. Those three things is what fucking counts. That's fucking fat loss 101 right there. Understand this. Your liver decides if you're in fat burning mode. Okay? And how many calories you're eating. So basically... Like I said, your liver's got to be empty of glycogen. It takes 24 fucking hours minimum to drain that liver of glycogen. Fasting forces that. Okay, fasting forces it. I had a girl I was talking to last night. She was watching some mainstream bozo. It's got like 200,000 subscribers on YouTube. You better believe him. He's trying to say that you could just basically eat a pile of lard and go into ketosis. Fucking idiot. Yeah, that makes sense. So what he was saying basically is that I could go eat fucking 200 grams of dextrose, which is straight fucking sugar, but as long as I ate my fucking body weight and lard right after, I'd be in ketosis. What a fucking idiot. Obviously not because my liver is going to be fucking to the max on sugar. Okay? It's the liver fucking glycogen that decides this shit. People got to do some fucking research. Okay, now. So you're a fat ass. You're fasting, you're fasting, you're, you're getting detoxed. You're not detoxed until you've lost all the fucking fat. Remember that. So for all you people out there that are like, Oh, my cleanse, my fucking cleanse, my cleanse. Your cleanse don't do shit. Okay, your cleanse don't do fucking shit until you've lost all the fucking body fat. I don't care if you cleanse your fucking asshole out 20,000 times over by fucking drinking straight castor oil. It's not going to matter. Because if you're a fat ass, you still got toxins in your fucking gut. You got to get lean to get clean. You got to get fucking lean. Okay? So now you're fucking fasting. You got a good handle on it. Okay, you're fasting. You're, you're going four, five, six days at a time. You're, start, you're doing some dry fasting even. Then all of a sudden you start to get down to where you're like getting say 15 pounds over fucking ripped body weight. Ripped body weight, okay? I'm not talking... Somebody just asked me tonight too, what is your optimal body weight for your height? You know what I messaged her back? I said, ripped. That's your optimal body weight. Fucking ripped. Okay? Fuck. Ripped. 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 <laughs> That's your fucking optimal fucking body weight. So you're getting lean. You're like 15 pounds off of getting ripped. Now if you want to get ripped... Then that's when you got to start fucking asking me for coaching or getting somebody to help you. Because at that point, you're not going to be able to fast for five, six, seven days in a fucking row. Okay, that's when you fucking start going into some of the routines I show people. Like, I got one routine where I have people basically do 72s. 
This is the fucking people that only need to lose about 15 pounds, not you fat asses. You fat asses can do 72 fucking days. So 72 hour fast, what I get them to do is I'll make them go snake juice, snake juice, dry. So the first day they'll fast on snake juice and they'll do a kidney shot. Kidney shots cool your kidneys down. When you're in deep ketosis all the time, it creates a fairly acidic environment in your kidneys. Fucking hit that fucking baking soda and that vinegar and lemon juice. Knock that back once or twice a day on the two snake juice days. And then the third day, go dry. So you fucking stop drinking the snake juice the night of the second day. Third day, go dry. The reason you go dry the third day because you weigh in dry before you eat your meal and you'll fucking get an accurate fucking weight on the goddamn scale. Perfect for trending your body weight. That's key. Okay, water fucking retention is a big fucking issue. And if you know when to weigh yourself, you'll get a more accurate reading on your weight trend. Okay, does that make sense? So like, let's say we're fasting on snake juice and if you're fat, let's say we, I, okay, let's say I ate a huge meal tonight. <clears throat> Obviously my weight tomorrow morning is going to be fucking skewed. That weight's junk, okay? My weight tomorrow night will be junk. Even though I'm fasting 24 hours, my weight tomorrow night will also be junk if I'm drinking snake juice all day because I'll have all that fucking water in me. Now my weight the next morning will be fairly good because I had the night to sleep and get rid of a bunch of fucking water. So that weight wouldn't be a bad weight to take if you're doing a snake juice fast. But even better is if you're always doing 24 hours dry at the end of your long fast and then you weigh yourself. It's going to be the most accurate. Because see, a lot of people panic about the fucking goddamn weight on the scale because they don't understand. If you're fasting for long fucking periods of time and those ketone strips are showing color, that means we're burning nothing but body fat. You're losing body fat, no matter what the scale fucking does. Some of you people will hold on to water. You know what the worst fucking thing, reason why people hold water a lot of times? Because you're worrying about fucking not losing weight. So then your cortisol goes through the roof and you can't sleep properly at night because you're worried, you're worried, you're worried. Like, fuck. Trust the fucking process. When you're not eating, you're losing body fat. Okay? Trust the fucking process. Also, on that note, I do not promote fucking freshwater fasting. Now, you can juggle the two. You know, you could put all your salts that you'd need in one day in a certain amount of water and then have some fresh water, drink maybe a couple drinks of the salt water, maybe at fucking eight, 9 a.m., then drink some drinks of the fresh and alternate them like this. Don't drink all the salt water first in the day. You'll end up with the fucking shits like fucking this girl I talked to today. Okay, she drank all the salt water first and had the shits. Then she's drinking fresh water. Alternate them. Alternate them. I don't give a fuck how you get the salts in. Just get them in evenly throughout the fucking day. I used to talk about blocking up the, 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 the snake juice in the day to get like a little bit of a dry fast in there. Don't worry about that. I pull that off sometimes because like my body reacts really easily to the salt. So I don't block it up into like a one hour drinking window though. I'm talking like I might drink all my fluid in like eight hours or something. But don't worry about that shit. Okay, just worry about fucking getting the water, the salt water in throughout the fucking day. Now water sources, let's get into that. Water sources, like I said, tap water is the worst. But if you have to use it, use it. But I'll tell you, you'll notice the difference when you're on a long fucking fast. So I made a post tonight how I'm going to do a crazy fucking fast. Crazy because of how lean I am. Right now I'm sitting about 12% body fat. I'm going to fast my fucking balls off right down 160 fucking pounds. The reason is, is because I'm motivating you guys and I want to be fucking shredded. And I'm going to show people that I can stay fucking ripped to the bone for as long as I want. Okay, this isn't just, this is going to be my last swing and wait for a while. I'm going to get ripped and stay there fucking probably right till fucking next fall. Okay? Now I want to fucking do, I, I like doing these kinds of experiments because I know then how my body's going to react to a crazy long fast when I'm getting very lean. Okay? Now this does not apply to fat asses. See, I... Sooner or later, no matter how fucking much muscle sparing fasting is, fasting is very muscle sparing. You can basically fast yourself down to skin and bone before you start fucking chewing on muscle. Not like your six meal a day bullshit. Well, you're, you'll start losing muscle when you're still a fat ass. But what I'm doing is I'm going right down to like 7-8% body fat 
no fucking food. So there's tricks. You fat asses can train your asses off in your fasting like this because you got all this fucking fat on your gut. You got all this fucking cholesterol. You got all this good fat. But me, I got to treat it almost like a marshmallow. When you're cooking a marshmallow over the fire. Like I can't just go train my balls off this week and not expect to break down muscle mass because I'm too lean. I don't got enough fucking fuel to fuel healing the muscles at this point. So the way I do it is I treat it like a marshmallow where, you know, if you put the marshmallow right in the fire, it'll just fucking light up. But if you keep it a little ways away, it'll get nice and brown. That's how I treat my fat loss when I'm doing experiments that are this hardcore and I'm cutting to this lean. Okay, what I do is I stay out of the fucking gym. If I am in the gym, I'll do very, very low volume just for the movement. Nothing that'll tax me. Like when I leave the gym, it'll feel like I didn't even do anything. I'll just grab some weight and just move it. Like maybe do a couple bench presses, a couple deadlifts with like mediocre weight, couple squats. That's it. Then what I do is I do cold baths. I do cold baths to chew the fucking, to like cook that marshmallow slowly and that'll burn the fat off of me without fucking stealing any muscle. Because when you get down to that nitty gritty where you're trying to get that fucking lean, you don't want to tax the fuck on your goddamn muscles when you're trying to cut down to 7% body fat with no fucking food. Okay, that's the trick. You fat asses can just fast your ass off and train your fucking bag off. Now to fucking get over some bullshit fucking debate, some people are like, oh, not eating is going to break down all your muscle mass when you're fucking 400 pounds. Okay, fucking idiots. If that was the case, that would mean that Somebody that's like 300 or 400 pounds that, I, that fast their bag off eats like four meals in a month. That means that eventually they're gonna have, they're just gonna be fat and bone. They're gonna be fat and bone with no muscle. Ain't gonna happen. Fuck. People are idiots. Always look at the extremes. See, you gotta remember this is another reason why the vegan diet is trash. This is a perfect example, and why everyone like praises it in the beginning. Most people that start their stupid vegan diet are fat as fuck, okay? And then they start eating their fucking vegetables and because they have all that cholesterol on their body still that they're not getting in their fucking stupid vegan diet, they feel okay. Soon as you get ripped though, have fun when you have no fucking excess cholesterol left on your fat gut. This is common, 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 common with fucking all the vegans that get a hold of me. I won't even fucking coach them anymore. I'll tell them, fast. Because you know why? If I start coaching them, they'll start bitching at me about how they're having fucking issues. I'm like, I'll be like, fuck, well, you're a vegan. Eat a fucking chunk of steak. Okay, there's always, I always have problems with them. It's like, and then they're blaming it on the fasting when it's their fucking stupid fucking diet. But here's the thing. I've had people just accidentally basically eat vegan. Fat asses. Because I'm like, fuck, you don't even need any fucking food. If you're going to eat anything, just eat a bunch of vegetables. They're, they fucking ate basically vegan for two fucking three weeks straight. And they had no issues. I understand this. But it's when they get leaner that they have fucking problems. Okay, that's when they, that's when they have fucking problems. That's why the vegan diet is trash. Fucking trash. You will not see one world-class motherfucking strength athlete that's on a fucking vegan diet without supplements. Without supplements. Now you can see some of the fucking vegans, yeah, they'll get by with their vegan diet with a bunch of fucking supplements. But I'm talking no supplements because I don't take fucking supplements. I don't preach supplements. They're expensive. They're not natural. Okay, I preach fucking straight up real fucking food. Okay, so back to the fucking goddamn course. The crash course in fucking snake diet land. So you're a fat ass. You're either drinking snake juice or dry fasting. Now if you're... If you got health issues like skin issues, things like this, that's where dry fasting is very good. But here's the thing. The easiest way to cut weight is going to be the way that you can fast and be the most productive, which is going to be on snake juice, salt water. Okay? Dry fasting, you can only go so long. Snake juice, you can go a long time, like a fucking month if you got the fucking willpower and you'll still be able to do your daily tasks. That's important to know because what you should be doing is lose all the fucking weight first. A lot of your fucking health issues will just clear up from the snake juice fasting. And then if you want to get really aggressive, 
Then you would, when you get down to where you got like 20, 15, 20 pounds to lose, then you would start fucking hammering out some hard dry fast at that point to like tighten up loose skin, you know, chew up all that extra fucking protein you got on your, like all that loose skin's food. Your body like literally eat it. Okay? So that's how you want to do it. Fast as long as you can on snake juice till you get, till you lose all the weight. That's it. Okay? Keep the macros correct. Low carb. Keep the calories down to fuck all when you do eat a meal once every fucking week. Okay? Remember, eating frequency is fucking number one. That's what this whole fucking snake diet idea is about. Eating frequency should be fucking low. Here's what I've been doing the last while before I decided to do this cut. And the reason I'm doing this cut as well is because I just want to fucking get fucking shredded. Shredded. And show people that I can stay shredded to fucking, like, with ease. Okay, and I want to be able to do some fucking like body weight motions that I can't do. Like I want to get really fucking good at doing volume muscle ups. Like I can bang off like five or six in a row right now, but I want to be able to just bang them off. I want to be able to do one arm fucking pull ups like fuck all. Okay, I want to be able to do some of this stuff. I just my priorities change. Okay, now it all depends on your priorities how lean you want to get. If I was gonna fucking still like do a powerlifting competition, I wouldn't try to pull myself down quite this lean. I might float around 165, 170, where I'm still really lean, probably like 9% body fat, but I'm a little heavier. It all depends where you want to be. Okay, if you want to just get shredded for the fucking beach, run yourself really lean for a couple months. Okay, if you want to fucking be like, like another example would be the exact opposite. Look at a strong man. They're force feeding all day, every day, cranking their insulin up all day, every day, just trying to stash body weight. Exact opposite is what you guys want to have done, okay? Unless you want to be a fucking strong man that's fucking 400 pounds, right? Okay? So that's the fucking gist of the snake diet. The salts. It's that simple what I said. Check out my fucking YouTube channel. Do not complicate snake juice, okay? That's the main video. It's ranges. If you're a, say if you're a fat woman and you're like 300 pounds, you're going to get away with a lot less water and salt. Well, actually, not less water, but a lot less salt. A lot of you really obese women can run because unless you're super active, which obviously you're not if you're 300 pounds. Okay, I make that assumption right away just based on your weight. So you're not doing fuck all. You can keep the salts low. Like you might even be able to run three quarters of a teaspoon of each of those salts and feel decent. And then run like two liters of water to kick all those ketones all day. Okay? Now, like I said, if you're, say you're a big dude, you're a big fucking fat guy that's like 400 pounds, six foot six, he might drink three liters of water in the day and he might knock back, like say, he'll still be a little lower on the salt intake than he needs because he's got so much fucking body fat and salts on his body. You feel it out. You fucking feel it out. The ranges I gave are very average. Like I went zero to two liters of water. I went zero to two, 4,000 milligrams, 5,000 milligrams potassium on the day. But that's like the wide end. A lot of people will be somewhere in the middle of that. You'll probably be still close to two liters, one and a half liters of water, but you can fuck with the salts. If you get the shits, cut the fucking salts back. Okay, that's it. Now, uh, let's see here. We're going to talk about body fat percentages here. Body fat percentage. Okay, I, I always talk about those DEXA scans I get, but I'll tell you the dead truth. I can... Fuck that DEXA scan right up if I want to. The only time things are worthwhile is when there's a trend that's accurate. Okay, the trend has to be accurate. Doesn't matter what scan you get done. If you get done something that's fairly high quality and it's accurate where you're going there in the same state. Like you got to either be, say you go in there every time where you're 48 hours dry fasted. That's going to make a nice trend so you can see what your direction is. But the actual body fat numbers are a fucking joke. I can go in there right now, get a DEXA scan done, come home, drink fucking five gallons of water, fucking eat a bunch of goddamn vegetables, go in there tomorrow, eat a bunch of carbs, and I'll fucking pull three pounds heavier on my muscle mass. Okay? Same thing with bod pods. You can fuck with them. Because you can go in there when you're not dehydrated the same amount as last time, and you have a bunch of water in your gut, and it fucks up the bod pod reading. Okay, because it's using volume to figure out your fucking, basically it's a ratio, it's your volume versus your body weight, but your body weight's going to be up because you fucking got a gut full of water or you got a bunch of glycogen. 
Okay? So here's the thing. The least number wise, I like I know like people like their little technical numbers, but if you really want to create a good trend to see what your body is doing, take fucking pictures every seven days. Number one. Number two, pinch calipers are gonna be the best thing to create a trend. Because I don't care what the number is, you just need a trend. So you pinch your fucking gut or whatever, pinch a spot or a couple spots, and log it. Log that trend from the pinch calipers. Because then at least you can see that the millimeters is getting smaller. And you know that you're fucking getting rid of body fat then. Because it's not fucking taking into account all the fluids and shit are in your gut. Okay, that's what counts. What you want to, you just want to get ripped. Okay, you want to get lean. Now, because you could have a guy that is like literally a fucking like Ron Coleman, like 300 pound fucking bodybuilder on juice. He could be running a fucking higher number on a set of pinch calipers, okay? And he could look soggy as fuck, but he's got so much muscle that his body fat percentage is going to be lower than some fucking guy that's skin and bone that's like 150 pounds ripped, ripped abs. You get that? Ron Coleman will look fatter than the guy with the ripped abs, but he's got fucking three times as much muscle, so percentage-wise, he's got a fucking way lower body fat. That's why those machines and shit. See, this is the thing. This is why you're going for fucking aesthetics. You're going for looks. Fucking measure your goddamn, like, look at your gut. Are you getting leaner or not? That's what counts. Fucking what do you look like? I don't care about your stupid fucking number. The reason I put the numbers up, because I, that DEXA scan, I go in there in the same state every time, and I'm smart enough that I can be like, okay, my number was a little higher this time because I fucking maybe ate a little different. But I know I'm knowledgeable enough that I can understand why the numbers swung around. Okay, and I can create a fucking trend. The trend is your fucking friend. That's why you, when you weigh yourself in the scale, you want to get weights that are usable. Okay, your weight after you eat a meal is not usable. And people are freaking out for fuck's sake. You just ate two pounds of fucking food or a pound. That weight means nothing. Your weight in the morning after a meal means nothing. Okay? You got to use the weights that are usable. You need fucking common sense, just like every other fucking thing with respect to this diet. Usable fucking weights. Okay? Even if, you, if you're doing that 72-hour routine that I was talking about for people that are leaner, you can, the only real usable weight's going to be the one where you're dry fasting on day three before the meal. Okay? The other ones, you are fucking got snake juice in you and all this other shit. The one that's dry, that's why I came up with that idea. And then... When the 72-hour fast gets so fucking hard to do that you're losing sleep, then you go to 48s. One day snake juice, second day dry. I can't believe I'm telling you guys this. This is like my fucking top secret weapon when I coach people. But I guess I do give people free help. Okay? Now as far as meds go with the snake diet, fuck your fucking meds. In, if, unless you're missing an organ. Okay? Unless you're missing a fucking organ or an organ doesn't work at all, like your pancreas with a type 1 diabetic, you don't need your fucking crybaby bitch-ass fucking meds. Somebody had their thyroid ripped out. Obviously, they now they got to be on fucking a medication because the fucking stupid doctors didn't just tell you to fast back in the day and they tore your fucking thyroid out because they don't know anything. Instead, they just tear out shit because they're, 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 you know, they're God, right? They're God. They can just fucking tear out organs, you know? Pretty soon, the doctors can be like, ah, your fucking heart's got a bad valve. We'll just tear it out. Fuck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's obviously extreme, but fucking idiots. Now, that being said, I'm going to tell you guys a little story. That I fucking, this is a good story. The hardest people for me to coach are type 1 diabetics. You know why? Because they're probably the only people that I help that can't fast for fucking days on end. Type fucking 1 diabetics. I have a girl I'm coaching right now, and another reason I don't coach them because fucking a lot of people are just idiots, and they're so reliant on their insulin that fucking when I'm trying to get them to like dial shit in, because we're trying to figure shit out, how much of a shot they need, how much, all this crap, they don't listen, then it freaks the fuck out of me, and this is a great story I'm going to tell you guys about. Why? This is why, the only ones I've, the only people that this is, basically these ones are the worst, okay? And underweight people with fucking cancer. Because those ones, I can't just get them to fast for days on end because eventually we need to fucking get some food on, some fat on them. But here's my type 1 diabetic story. So I've been helping this girl. She's actually smart. 
which is good. Fuck, type 1 diabetics that's stupid or fucking, I won't even coach them because they'll just fucking kill themselves. So this girl, first day, we get her on the snake juice. I got her to eat one low-carb meal, low-carb, and then we fucking started fasting. The next day, she fucking woke up. She knows her body pretty well. Her blood sugar was like around nine. She knows that her blood sugar will drop when she goes and does volleyball and stuff. Sure as fuck, it dropped down perfect. Before dinner, her blood sugar, I believe, was at like, it was almost, it was like at six or five, which is okay. She ate dinner, low carb. I just had her eat a chunk of steak and like 400, 500 grams of vegetables, just like most of you people that I'm trying to cut. After her dinner, her blood sugar was up as high as 13. So she took, we took the shot, dropped it down, which was fine. Okay, so then we went to bed, and then the next day, everything's so basically the very first fucking day, this girl would normally take 30 units, 30 fucking units of fucking fast acting insulin. I had her take four on the first fucking day. This is how good this shit works. She's already, she's losing weight so fast to make her head fucking spin. But I got her on 24s. Okay, only her. Because these are type ones. Okay, 24 hour fucking fast, zero carb, low cal. Okay, so the frequency isn't as much as optimal as I'd like it when we talk about frequency. She is eating the meal a day right now. But her macros are bang on. Fuck, fuck off her carbs. Her calories are fucking as low as I can get them. Okay, next day, even better. So we go through the day, everything's fine. Um, she ends up eating the meal, takes a shot, and her insulin or her blood sugar is at like 7.6 after dinner. Now I know because I did all the math that a half of a dose of fucking high fast acting insulin is gonna drop her blood sugar at most about 50 milligrams per deciliter. So, I got her to do it. She was a little nervous, but we had confidence. I'm like, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be up for a few hours. Fucking do it. Stay here. Stay on the phone with me. Make sure everything's okay. She fucking didn't hear from her for fucking two hours. So, I'm losing it. Fucking losing it. I knew a guy that knew her that actually helps coach her. And I actually tried to phone him. I phoned her twice. No answer. So, I'm like fucking freaking the fuck out because... Like, if she would have fucked, you can, this is where, where type 1s are dangerous. Because if, they'll, if they fucking take too much insulin and go unconscious, they could go on a fucking, basically a, a fucking insulin fucking coma. And uh, fucking die. So I couldn't hear, I didn't hear from her. I'm like, fucking, I was that close to calling 911. That close. Because I had her phone number, I know where she lives. They would have fucking found her because it was like two hours after she did the shot and she just went MIA. Finally, she called me fucking back at 2.30 in the morning, and she was fine. The fucking half dose we gave her brought her down from 7.8 right down to 5.3. Perfect. Perfect little experiment, but she fucking scared the fuck out of me. This happened to me once before with some girl I was helping in the States, and she just didn't fucking listen. And so I cut her off. Because, see, that's, that's the risk I take. Okay, that's the risk I take. I'm trying to help people, and these people here are fucking critical. These fucking type 1 diabetics are a fucking pain in the ass. But it's, it, it's fun for me because it's a challenge because I got to dial it in. Now this girl, we're getting so dialed in that we're going to actually make a crack at a 48. When we get a type 1 diabetic fasting 48 or 72 fucking hours, that's pretty fucking good, I'd say, because there's no insulin being taken in for three days straight. Okay, type 1s that still have any sort of... Now this is where, this is where reversing type 1 is actually possible. It's been done. Okay, this is where you give your pancreas such a rest that the beta cells actually start growing back because the autoimmune fucking issue that happened when you're four or five years old is because of fucking some shock in your life. Okay, it can be reversed. So anyway, that was just a fucking offside topic because we we're talking about meds and that's one person that needs to take their fucking goddamn med is that's a type one's got to take their fucking insulin. Okay, they gotta take it. They gotta be watching their shit like a fucking hawk. The rest of you fucking crybabies can cut your fucking meds cold turkey. If you have all your organs. Okay? So, 
Oh, da, 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 da. What do we got for questions here? Maybe I'll answer a couple. So now I'm just going to talk about some fasting routines and the beauty of this lifestyle once you actually lose all the fucking fat. Once you've fasted all the fat off, okay, and you're lean, you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever the fuck you want. You can start eating fruit again. The main rules always apply. The general health eating frequency has got to be low. I don't give a fuck what your macros are. That eating fre frequency better be low. You use scale feedback. Maybe you want to build muscle but do lean, but gain it in a lean matter. Well then, if you want more performance in the gym, you might crank up the carbs a bit. Still have the low frequency. So here's one thing I do. So insulin, for people who want to try to build muscle, insulin's your friend if you know how to fucking control it so you don't become a fat ass. So what I do, I've done experiments where I had alternating fasting days. Okay, now this is for fucking lean people, not you fat asses. You fat asses just don't need to eat. But I had alternating eating days where I'd fast one day, so I'd get about a 36-hour fast in there, and I'd have like a 12-hour eating window. And what I would do is I'd eat very lean and green, basically, in the morning, or before a workout, and then I'd wait a couple hours, go train, and then I'd pound back all my fucking carbs afterwards. Okay, so on the training days I'd eat and what I would do is I'd give myself this ham this huge hit of insulin and just your muscles just soak that fucking all them nutrients up. Okay? There is a little bit of fucking truth to some of the fucking bro science and shit out there when it comes to, you know, if you're training really fucking hard, if you have like a fucking meal afterwards and you can get your insulin up, you're already gonna pound more fucking nutrients into the muscle. So what I would do is I train really hard, and on the train, the basically the eating days were the training days, okay? The eating days were the fucking training days. So, and then I'd have this fasting day, which I would use for weight control, and I'd use that for health control, because insulin being low is gonna help with fucking goddamn inflammation. Inflammation is pretty much all your guys' problems. Any of you, any of you fuckers that have skin issues, anything, it's all inflammation problems. All of it. All of it is from eating too often. Eating frequency is poor. Because if you have good eating frequency, I showed this, I ate McDonald's for a fucking month straight. Basically, I ate a meal a day most days out of the week through a 48 in there on the weekends. And I had perfect fucking blood tests. Now, somebody did ask a question about if your cholesterol number, numbers will swing around or triglycerides will swing around when you're fucking like fasting really hard. Yeah. They can because you're breaking body fat down so fast that you're going to have some high fat content in your blood. Of course. And then you're fucking basically your liver's turning it into ketones and you're pissing it out or using it. Okay? So don't worry about your stupid fucking mainstream fucking blood tests. Okay? They don't tell you anything. Whatever, whatever happened to just, how do you feel? Do you feel good? That's the first thing I ask people. I don't care about all the fucking Mickey Mouse bullshit fucking statistics and fucking all the numbers and shit. I don't fucking care. If somebody feels good, you're getting results. The numbers don't mean anything. Okay, they mean something afterwards. But feel, feel, feel. If you fucking feel good, you're doing good. That's it. If you don't have any fucking headaches, that's a good thing. Okay, if you have nasty ass headaches on fucking the fifth day of a fast, if it's on day five of a fast, maybe you need to have a fucking refeed. Small refeed. Okay, if you're having headaches on fucking after 24 hours, then there's other issues. You probably haven't fucking fasted long enough to beat your fucking food withdrawals. <clears throat> Somebody just asked a question about muscle loss. Okay, I'm going to talk about that. I talked about it before briefly. So muscle loss. Let's talk about muscle loss when you're cutting on a mainstream fucking six meal a day diet first. If you want to lose muscle really quick, go do a fucking master cleanse. Okay, go do, go do something where you're really low calorie with insulin spikes involved, which is exactly what your sugar filled fucking bullshit master cleanse does, which is exactly what your fucking low calorie bullshit Weight Watchers diet does, which is exactly what your fucking low calorie fucking bullshit fucking cutting bodybuilding diet does, unless you're on steroids because that's the only way they can fucking maintain the goddamn muscle mass because steroids make your body very muscle sparing. That's how most of the people you see that are just fucking shredded to fucking the bone on the fucking internet, they're on drugs. 
There's very few people that aren't on fucking drugs. You can tell the guys that aren't. They're lean, but they ain't like these fuckers that look like they're almost ready to die. Now that I fucking got that out of the way. So the most catabolic thing you can do is be at a 100% caloric deficit and still spiking your insulin. Okay, if you're still spiking your insulin, like it's... It, <laughs> Let's say that you're at a fucking really low calorie, like a caloric deficit of like fucking a thousand calories. So let's say ballpark, let's say your maintenance calories, if you're a male or something, uh, fuck, I don't know, whatever size you be. Let's say your maintenance is 2,500. That's the maintain your body weight. And let's say the frequency is constant. Let's say you're eating a meal a day. If you fucking went down to a thousand calories and you ate that thousand calories in six meals in the day rather than the one meal in the day or even maybe going 2,000 calories every 48 hours which is even better the six meal a day routine at that caloric deficit of a thousand of, of 1500 calories will fucking tear your muscles down tear your fucking muscles down you'll get the best results you're gonna get is when for, as far as cutting goes, is exactly what I'm doing this week is the best fucking result you're going to get for the fastest result is when you're eating nothing, drinking snake juice, and letting your body relax and burn the body fat and just sit there and let it roast. That's how you're going to get the best muscle sparing result. Yeah, I'm not going to be in the gym for like a week or very hard, but I don't care. I'll train my balls off once I've cut the fat off my body. I'm not going to lose any fucking muscle via not going to the gym for one week. Okay? So there's that. So that's how muscle sparing this is. When we're talking the guy that's trying to lose the last 10 pounds, the best fucking way you're going to lose that weight is if you're fucking fasting and eating low carb. Simple as that. The longer you fast, the better. The best is going to be when you go into the cut with like a beat up body like from training really hard and just cutting the 10 pounds in a week. That's when you're going to get the best fucking results. Just cutting the weight as fast as you fucking can. Not even giving your body a chance to chew on muscle. Okay, you're just burning the fat. As long as you're not eating bubble gum. Okay, because like if you fucking ate eight pieces of bubble gum in the day versus not eating the bubble gum, you will be catabolic eating that fucking bubble gum because what's it doing? Spiking your fucking insulin. Your body cannot break down body fat where the fuck if your insulin's high. This is a common knowledge. Common knowledge. Okay, the insulin must be low to burn fucking body fat efficiently. That's why I was doing that routine when I was trying to still build muscle and stay lean, that alternating fasting routine, because I could crank my insulin through the roof on the training days, soak up all these nutrients, and then on the, on the next day I was completely fasted. So that's like my reset day. And then I get another sleep on top of that. So I'd never gain any bad body weight. I'd stay lean and strong. Maybe even build. Now that's where you gotta fuck with the diet. It's the diet's perfect. Okay, the diet is perfect. You can make it do whatever you want. Okay? If you want to gain weight in the healthiest manner possible, so you still keep your inflammation low, what you do, that alternating day routine would be a good routine. You'd eat like a fucking pig on your training day, fast the next day, keep your fucking insulin down, keep your inflammation down with the fast. Either way, you wanna fucking fast long. You can even get even crazier. I've done a routine before where I was training three days in a row each week. And in those three days, I packed a pile of food. A pile of fucking food. I was still training fasted, but I'd go earlier and early enough in the day that I'd eat all day long in those three days. And guess what I did for the other four days? Fucking fasted. Okay, I might have one other meal on one of those other days. It'd be strictly low carb. I ate all my carbs during the training days. And then I have one fucking low carb meal as I'm kicking myself back into ketosis. Fast all fucking week. Okay, I'd fast for basically three days in a row. I'd have three days where I ate like a pig. One day where I ate a really tight low carb meal after I was done beating the shit out of my body in the gym. And then I'd rest for three days and eat nothing. You see all the, all the routines you can do. It's like you can do anything you want once you're lean. Just focus on cutting the fat. If training in the gym is, make, is, is coming into the way of you fasting, that's not priority. Priority for you fat asses is fasting as long as you fucking can to cut the goddamn body fat. Worry about training after. Okay? Now if you can train, fine. 
But if you if if your training is making you have to eat a meal that night, that ain't good. Because that's just putting the fat burn on pause. And your little chicken chip workout didn't burn anything for calories anyway. See? You're, you're trying to cut fat as fast as you can. Once you lean, then you, once you're lean, you can fuck around and pump iron and do whatever you want. Cut the fucking fat as quick as you can. But like I say, if you feel good in the gym, train. But if it's making you feel like lightheaded and shit and you can't handle the training and the fasting, fasting's fucking priority. Fasting is fucking priority. And most of you are complete beginners anyway. What you could do, you could eat one meal, you could have one feeding day a week, train your balls off on that one day and feed on that same day and then fast for six days in a fucking row. You could do that. Fuck, there's fucking people that are hard gainers that only needed to train every five days to actually make gains. If they overtrain, they wouldn't even make any gains. Mike Mentzer talks about some skinny kid that he fucking couldn't get any gains out of and he cut the kid's volume way back, cranked the intensity up as high as he could, cut the volume back, and the kid started to grow. Kid is only training once every five fucking days because he's a skinny, hard gainer. You don't need to train very much if you train fucking hard when you do train. See, that's why with this diet, optimally, when you're fasting, leading a fasting-focused lifestyle, you want to train as hard as you fucking can when you do train. You want to eat around the training. And then when you're resting, you want to take big resting times. Just like the lions. You know, they're sprinting and beating the shit out of their bodies on the hunt. They eat like fucking pigs after they're done killing the animal. Then they land their fucking balls for three days. That's exactly how cavemen used to do it too. They'd fucking kill. They'd be putting out, putting out. You know, they'd kill something, eat it. And then they'd lay around and sleep just like the fucking lions. Okay, that's how it works. So the, their exercise was in the same time frame as their training. Basically. That's, and that makes sense. That just makes sense. And then you fucking fast when you're healing. Okay, you fast when you're fucking healing. One of the worst things going right now is people being overtrained or always in the fucking gym with shitty fucking training intensity. Okay? Somebody asked, can type 1 diabetes be cured? It can be cured. Especially if you catch it right when the person gets diagnosed. Right when their fucking pancreas so-called isn't producing any insulin. They need fucking insulin. If they got, if they got on a fasting-focused, low-carb routine, low-eating frequency, their fucking pancreas will heal. Your body's amazing. Have you ever heard of people like growing new fucking veins in their hearts? Like whole new arteries to bypass something? The fucking body just did it on its own? You think your fucking pancreas can't grow back beta cells? You're a fucking idiot. Your body does all sorts of crazy shit. If you make it, if you put it in that pinch where it's trying to survive, your body will do crazy shit to try to fucking survive. Okay? Well, I'll just look and see if I can find any assholes on here tonight. Here's one about a gallbladder. See that? I hate hearing that people have their gallbladder taken out. Fuck. Completely unnecessary if they fucking would have just had you fast and eaten properly. As soon as your gallbladder is pulled out, you basically, your gallbladder is like a little volume capacity bottle for bile. And now you fucking can't handle fucking big hits of food as easy or especially high fat. So, but people without a gallbladder can fast. Because guess what? That's eating again. Anything that involves eating is not going to involve fasting. Okay? You know what's funny? Everybody, everyone's a fucking expert when it comes to fucking supplements and like I see fuck people are always talking about their bullshit their milk and magnesia their magnesium their fucking all this fucking all these supplements like over and over like these different plants and roots and like yeah some of this stuff's good for you but the thing is the most important thing for you is the fucking not eating they're all experts in their fucking supplements. Everyone's an expert in their fucking little new best and latest and greatest supplement or their new fucking plant or whatever they're taking. And they know nothing about not eating. <laughs> it's like, fuck. Shut the fuck up and fast. Everybody's an expert. I always come, have people coming to me they're like, what do you think about fucking like, you know, like say garlic or what do you think about fucking this for cancer? What do you think about fucking, uh, oh, fuck apricot seeds? What do you, like, I know this is all cancer shit, but like, what do you think about all this? What do you think about this for the thyroid? What do you think about this spice? What do you think about this fucking thing? Fuck. Learn how to fucking fast. That's what you need to do. Okay. Don't worry about eating. Fasting's priority. 
Fasting is fucking priority. It's the same idea with the three fucking things where I talk about fat loss. Okay? Eating fucking frequency. Nobody even talks about that. Eating frequency is number one. Eating frequency. Okay? Then fucking calories and macros. Okay? Eating fucking frequency. And if your eating frequency is wide enough, then your macros don't even matter. Because if you're fucking fasting for two weeks at a time, I don't really care if you ate a watermelon every two weeks. It's full of sugar. I don't give a fuck. You're just fasting for two fucking weeks. The macros matter the most once you get to where you're fucking tightening up the fucking fasting routine. Like if I'm trying to get somebody ripped and they're only doing 48s. That's where it'll matter. Because if you eat a bunch of carbs on a 48-hour fast, you're basically wasting a day of fat burn to fucking clear your fucking liver, to empty your liver of glycogen to get back into ketosis. Okay? So you see what I'm saying? The longer you fast, it kind of just scrubs out the other fuck-ups you might make. The longer, but as soon as you start tightening up that fasting window to like, you know, well, that's why OMAD fucks you up. Because if you're fucking, if, fuck, fuck OMAD. OMAD's for fucking type 1 diabetics. That's about it. Okay? But 48s, 72s, 48s even. If you're eating on a 48-hour window, and you're eating a bunch of carbs... If you're trying to cut on a 48-hour window eating carbs, you're going to have a bitch of a time. Because your body's not in fat burning mode. You're going to always have hunger issues that next night. So there's that. Okay? Carbs, th this, is main, this is basically just common knowledge. Obviously, when you're trying to lose weight, carbs are trash. If you're trying to lose body fat, carbohydrates are trash. Calories are trash. Eating frequency being high is trash. Okay, that's it. Okay, that is it. Somebody just brought up vaccines. You know what's sad? I've ran my mouth about vaccines. They're a crock of fucking shit. Your fucking kid needs to be eating, be eating dirt when they come out of the womb so that they're fucking actually immune to shit so they're not little pussies that are allergic to fucking peanut butter. The vaccines are causing all the fucking problems with allergies and everything. I had a lady get a hold of me and she's like, oh, I'm so happy you're anti-vax. Because her kid basically has brain damage, blatant brain damage as soon as she started vaccinating him when the kid was a kid. And she actually has a big following. She actually promotes a big Facebook page about it. You know, like, fuck. It's just more fucking crap. Any healthy kid, if your kid's fasting and eating fucking clean fucking food and you're not a lazy fucking parent and your kid's not eating a bunch of garbage and your kid's getting into bed on time and getting its fucking sleep and outside playing in the fucking dirt not being all sanitized using hand cleaners and shit like all the sanit like everything's so fucking sanitized they just fuck shit up this is getting off topic but your kid will beat every sickness that they get it okay like whooping cough's not gonna kill a healthy kid okay like one in fucking one in thousands Okay, if the kid was fucking leading a fucking clean life. Okay, like all this shit. Your measles ain't gonna kill your kid. Chicken box ain't gonna kill your kid. The fucking flu ain't gonna kill your fucking kid if your kid is fucking eating dirt and your kid's tough. Like I think I'm like one of the last, like at my age, I think I'm almost like, almost the last, uh, what do you call it? Fuck, generation that actually fucking has, is tough. Like where I don't get sick from every little bullshit thing. Fuck, and you know what that comes back to? Because you, you parents are all fearful. So you fucking all think your kids are going to die if they don't get the fucking flu shot, which will actually kill them. Okay, that's the snake diet. Simple as fuck. You don't eat. Cut all the fucking body fat. Drink salt water, dry fast. Drink salt water first, lose a bunch of weight. Dry fast. Once you get down to where you're getting fairly lean, then you start fucking around with more so with macros and shorter fasting routines. That is it. And you're ripped in a week. So the experiment I'm doing right now, I'm going to go as long as I can to get down to fucking 7% body fat. I've been 8.2% according to the DEXA scan. Like I said before, those scans don't mean shit. But from the trend, it showed me as 8.2. And so basically... At 8.2, it showed that I had 11 pounds of body fat. Right now, I have, according to that DEXA scan, 19.6 pounds of body fat. I feel that if I'm at 10 pounds of body fat, I'll be 7, 7 point some percent. So I got to lose about 10 pounds of straight fat this week, and guess how I'm going to do it? I certainly ain't going to beat the shit out of my muscles in the gym when I'm already this lean, because that'll just be counterproductive. That'll be catabolic. 
What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slow cook my body like that little, like that marshmallow. Keep it away from the flame. I don't want to catch the marshmallow on fire and break it down. I just want to get it nice and like tanned up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do lots of cold baths. I'm just gonna suck balls. But I'm gonna fucking freeze my bag off in the bathtub. I'll burn probably 500 to 1,000 calories if I'm in there a half an hour to an hour. So I'm gonna roast body fat in the bathtub. Combined with the fasting, that's when I'm going to cut all the weight. Because I just, I want to get just fucking ripped. I just want people's jaws to drop. I'm sick of fucking seeing people also. See, I love the extremes. This is the extreme. This is as hardcore as it gets. This is the extreme end of getting lean, okay? This is the extreme end. So me getting this lean is complete motivation to other people. It's like, okay, he just fucking didn't even eat. He got that fucking lean. I'm going to get down to that body weight. Then I'm going to start probably going back on my alternating fasting routine where I'm going to train my bag off on my feeding days and throw a fast a day in there. It's that simple. This is so fucking easy. Oh, I was talking a little bit about constipation, the four to one veggies part real quick. So I'm always, I always talk about four to one refeeds. What that means is this. Because when you're low carbing it, because remember, eating frequency, macros, calories. We want calories as low as possible on the refeeds. Macros, we want to be low carb. So that four to one, because we're going such low carb, we want enough vegetables or we'll fucking get plugged up. So a, an example would be, let's say you're a fat ass. You're, you know, you, you got through your first 48 hours. You're in ketosis. You piss on your strips. You're in ketosis. You're not fucking up. You're not on any meds. Meds will fuck you out of ketosis too. They'll help make you break down muscle. You're all good. Let's say you just... You have a little refeed at the 48 hour mark. Or you feel good at 48. I always fucking promote this. You feel good at 48, fast longer. Don't just fucking... That's another thing too. When you make a decision. Okay, a lot of people are like, Well, I don't know if I'm going to eat on Friday or Saturday. I'm like, make a decision right fucking now, fatty. I'm like, make a decision. Either fucking say you're going to eat Friday or say you're going to eat fucking Saturday. Because if you don't make a decision now, you know what you're going to do. You're going to eat on fucking Friday. Sure as shit. I'm like, okay, they make the decision Saturday. Okay, so then let's say you eat and then you're going to eat this four to one meal. So an example would be like, say, four to one's the minimum. It could be five to one, six to one. I don't give a fuck. Eat your vegetables first. Eat your vegetables first because I don't care if you don't have much room for the meat after. If you're full on the vegetables, then quit eating. Don't force food. Rule number one, don't force motherfucking food. Because I hear this and it makes me mad. It's like, I couldn't eat 500 calories worth of food. Well, why did you then? Don't. And if you didn't, if you still felt good, just keep fasting. Why the fuck would you put the fat burn on pause? Like there's no gun to your fucking head saying you got to eat 500 calorie refeed. Fucking low carb. Just keep going. Like how simple is that? Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Okay, keep going until you fucking feel like you're fucking like weak as fuck or something's going south. Then do your little refeed. Okay. But four to one would be like, say, 400 grams of fucking vegetables, 100 grams of fucking steak. And another thing, while we're on that topic, people are always like, healthy fats, healthy fats. You don't need any fucking fat when we're trying to cut weight. Why would we eat more calories? Like fucking three rules again. Frequency, fucking macros, fucking calories. Why the fuck would we eat more calories that are unnecessary? Eat a chunk of fucking steak, because steak gets me the best results of how people feel. Chicken breasts are trash. Then eat fucking 400 grams plus of vegetables. That's it. You don't need to throw any fucking coconut oil in there. You don't need to throw half an avocado in there. Why the fuck would you? That's just gonna. That's just more calories. Your body's got to burn now before it can fucking start burning body fat. You know, you kept the macros good. You kept the calories low enough that once your fucking body burns the calorie content from that meal, you'll be bang right into body fat burning mode because you didn't fucking eat any sugar. If you would have ate sugar in your th in your meal, you would go back into fucking, you'd kick yourself out of ketosis because you filled your liver glycogen up again and now you got to wait. But as long as you fucking kept the calories low in your little low carb meal, then you'll be right straight into fat burning, body fat burning mode as soon as your body chews up those calories. So why in the fuck would you eat more calories? Like why, why would you eat a fucking 100... 100 fucking calories worth of fucking coconut oil in one t tablespoon. Like, that's a waste. That's just a fucking another fucking bunch of weight that you're not gonna, that's gonna take that much longer to come off your body now. Because you stuffed your face full of fat. 
Okay? See, this is, the, this, is old, this is old keto mentality. This is your mainstream keto mentality where they think they can just eat fucking fat for fucking years straight and, not lo and lose all the weight in the world. No! That's fucking calories for fuck's sakes. You know, the only reason most of these keto assholes even lose a bunch of weight, the mainstream people that don't, don't fucking want to count calories or anything, the only reason they lose weight at the start is because they're fucking getting rid of all the glycogen out of their body and they just lose a bunch of water weight. Unless they cut the calories back and also, the eating frequency, if you're eating six meals a day, or two meals a day, or three meals a day, it doesn't matter. If you're eating throughout the day, low-carb keto, where you're 24-hour ketosis, so when you eat, you're still going to spike your insulin. And as long as your insulin's up, you're still not going to burn fucking body fat. That's still going to be catabolic when you're at a deficit. So if you're eating strict keto, okay, strict fucking keto, like say 20 grams of carbs a day or less, if you're at a caloric deficit eating strict fucking keto and you're not fasting, eating multiple meals a day, you will still break down fucking muscle mass because your fucking insulin's up and you can't burn body fat when your insulin's up. Okay, now if you're fasting eating strict keto because that's basically what I'm getting you fat asses to do, then you're going to fucking roast fucking body fat like crazy. Obviously, the fasting's optimal because you're not eating anything. Like, don't eat. Like, people just can't get this through their fucking heads. As soon as you eat, that's calories. Your body's gonna have to burn those calories before you're fucking back into burning body fat. Why would you, why would you eat more food when you got fucking, like I say, if you're somebody that's 50 pounds overweight, which is lots of you, and you got like fucking 3,500 calories per pound of body fat, do the fucking math. You're at like 175,000 fucking calories on your fat ass when you're fucking 50 pounds overweight. And, that, and that's just not fat. That's fucking minerals. You name it. That's everything you need to sit on your fucking ass like a grizzly bear and fucking hibernate. See how grizzly bear... Want to talk about muscle sparing? A grizzly bear will literally fatten up all summer and fucking have cubs in the winter and sit there all fucking winter dry fasting. Do you think they're burning a bunch of muscle for months? We're talking dry fasting for months. Fuck. They might lose a little bit of muscle due to inactivity, but the actual fasting is not causing them to lose anything. That's the same idea with, with so let's say if you're like basically inactive, like you don't do shit, like you're, you're, let's say you're a 300 pound dude and you weren't doing nothing. If you just continue to do nothing and you fasted, you're not going to lose any muscle mass. The only people that will lose some muscle mass when they're fasting hardcore are the people that were already pumping iron and heavy weights like fucking crazy. Like one guy I used to help, he's a fucking like a world-class bench presser. You know, he's got some fat on him, but we couldn't do the aggressive long fast with him because he still had to train. Because he still had to fucking train because he competes in bench press. So we had to fucking massage it. Okay, because if he was inactive for a week, you know, or two weeks, let's say, more so, probably two weeks. Two weeks, you might start losing something when you're at that caliber. You know, then it's different. It's the inactivity is why he's losing the muscle, not because he's fucking fasting. It's the inactivity. But the thing is, when he trains as hard as he does, like that hard, and like we're talking crazy fucking volume and crazy fucking weight, and, like crazy shit. Like this guy will fucking bench press 365 pounds for like six sets of 20 on like a fucking minute and a half rest. Like 365 pound bench for 20 reps in a row for six for 60 reps total in like eight minutes. Like that's crazy. Okay, this guy can't do that without, he's gonna break down muscle trying to uh, attempt that if he's fucking fasting for six days straight. You see what I'm saying here? The average person, you fast as long as you fucking can, your little workouts aren't gonna do nothing. But somebody like him, we had to massage it a little different. That's why I had to make him fast a little different, like with a meal a day and 48s. And obviously, we couldn't cut the fat as quick, but we didn't care because we only needed to cut 10 pounds. You see, there's either way, you always want to fast. You're always fucking fasting. And all you fat asses, you should never be eating back to back days. Ever. On the last note, never back to back days. As far as the fucking steak diet goes, you don't ever need to eat back to back days. The only, I'll eat, unless you're fucking shredded. You better show me a picture of your fucking shredded fucking 10 pack if you're eating back to back days or you're competing in something that is a very high strength sport. Then you might go to a meal a day. But other than that, most of you fuckers do not need that much food that you can eat every second day easily. 
And then you could just fuck with the window on the second day. You know, you could eat one meal every 48 hours or you could give yourself a six hour window every 42 hours of fasting. But either way, if you're eating back to back days, you're being a fucking pig. You don't need to eat back to back days. All that is trash. I use it for fucking type one diabetics. That's it. Now let's get into some fucking other part of the snake diet that's very important. Fear of judgment. I talk about this all the fucking time. The first part of starting the snake diet is telling your fucking friends you're on the snake diet. You know, pretend you're a vegan. You know, vegans tell everybody they're a fucking vegan. Well, tell everybody you're on the snake diet because then the motherfuckers will leave you alone. You'll get the hate out of the way. Because you know why? Then when you, do, when you go with your little friends, then you're not dealing with hiding. You're not like, oh, I'm fucking fasting, so now I can't tell them and I can't have a fucking beer or whatever, or a fucking whatever, the garbage, okay? Fuck, why do you think I make people do this? I had this conversation for like an hour with a lady today. You know, she wanted me to, she, like, I have so many people wanting to pay me for coaching. There's no fucking way I'm going down that road. You know why? Because... The thing is, the reason they want to pay me is because they don't want to put up the fucking accountability pictures. That's my number one. That's how you start the snake diet. With your fucking fat ass up on the fucking internet. Because that keeps you accountable. True accountability. Because you know why when your picture's up there, you face that judgment, you're scared shitless, and you'll stick to this. Because if I didn't do that back in the day when I still charged, I had people fucking give up and cheat. And then guess what? It's on me because now they paid me. Now I got to deal with their crybaby bullshit. And it's just a fucking headache. It wasn't worth it. So I'm like, fuck them. I'll fucking just fucking get the value some other way. Now I only coach people if they put pictures up. And guess what? I get way better results because I can be a complete, utter fucking asshole like I am on here right now. And you can't do shit about it. Except listen. That's all you can do is listen to me. Subscribe to my fucking YouTube channel. Listen to me even more. Okay, that's why I do this. Because I can get results. It's the fucking attitude that gets the goddamn results. It's the fucking lifestyle is easy to follow. Like a trained fucking monkey can do this. Like unless you're fucking lazy as fuck. The only people that won't fucking be able to do this are people that are afraid of judgment and people that are lazy as fuck. Two people. That's it. That's it. The fucking fear of judgment is the biggest fucking problem. Tell everybody. And if you're getting results right now, put your fucking results on your personal Facebook pages. Okay, fucking put them up there. Tag my name. Tag the fucking snake diet. Tell everybody to fuck off. You always have naysayers. You're always going to have a couple people be like, yeah, but doesn't this fuck up your metabolism? Fucking idiots. It's like, <laughs> I love that one. Doesn't this fuck, isn't it going to destroy your metabolism when you go back to eating normal? Well, for not starters, you're never going to eat normal ever fucking yet. And secondly, your metabolism is already fucked. Why do you think you're a fat pig in the first place, you fucking idiot? Fuck. The metabolism thing just drives me up the wall. The very definition of a fast metabolism is burning body fat like fucking mad. Like, if you're burning body fat like crazy when you're fasting, wouldn't you say that that means you have a fast metabolism if you're roasting fucking body fat? I think so. Like, by definition, just burning body fat that fast, that means you have a fast fucking metabolism. Because your body, it's showing you how much your body needs to burn. It's like, fuck, I'm burning fat fast. Obviously, you got a fast metabolism. Okay, and it wakes up your metabolism because obviously your fucking thyroid issues and shit slow everything down. Okay, because they don't know how to communicate with your fucking pituitary gland and all this other shit. Fucking hormone imbalances are the biggest issue. As soon as your hormones get balanced, it's like everyone's like, what if you're, what if you're hypo fucking, fuck. What if you have hypothyroidism, fuck, fucking shut up. Your hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism is a fucking hormone issue caused by your bad fucking diet and a piss poor eating frequency. That's it. Like, shut the fuck up with all your fucking bullshit. All your mainstream problems. Your mainstream health problems. Like I told you before, if you got all your fucking organs, you can fast. Okay, even the people with cancer. The fat people with cancer, fucking fast your asses off. I treat them exact same as everybody else. The skinny people with cancer, a little different. I'll get them to do hardcore dry fast, and I might refeed them for four days in a row to gain the weight back. Long dry fast, refeed. Long dry fast, refeed. 
Okay? If you were doing an alternating day routine with them, you wouldn't get the results. You want the long fucking fast to get deep into autophagy before you do a refeed. Okay? So, like, these people, you don't need to fucking worry about any of this shit. It's just bullshit. Your doctors are fucking... They, they, <laughs> they, make, you, they make themselves sound so fucking smart. Because they know the terminology of their fucking goddamn meds. That's why. Oh, yeah, you, you need this med, and you need this, and this, and this. They don't know anything about metabolism. They don't know nothing about fucking fixing disease. They do not know anything about creating health. They're a fucking joke. And it ain't their fault. It's a fucking goddamn education system that's ran by Big Pharma. Okay, that's the problem. Fuck, this so This started in the 19 fucking, what, just after World War II with like, uh, what, uh, Carnegie and fucking all these other assholes that basically gave a bunch of fucking grant money to these universities to fucking do all this research on meds. That's how it started. Okay, do your fucking research. Okay, that's it. And now we got meds. When, when, and all the fucking, you had allopathic doctors and fucking, uh, ah, fuck. Ah, fuck. Now I'm having a brain freeze. You have two fucking types of doctors. You basically have the ones that believed in surgery and the ones that believed in natural remedies. Homeopathic. Okay? Basically, the allopathic took over in a sense. And they weren't getting any results. It was just a crock of shit. Because guess what? Where do you think money can be made? In allopathy or homeopathic doctors? Obviously, the allopaths. Tons. Fuck. Let's sell meds. Let's sell, 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 sell. And then now you got a fucked up education system. And now you got a bunch of egotistical fucking assholes that come out of our education system thinking they know shit. Yeah, they know nothing. Nothing. I have more experience in my fucking pinky than these fucking assholes have. They, they wouldn't last a fucking day in my fucking world. They, they'd be like trying to tell me that fasting's bad, and I only got like 50,000 fucking experiments on myself and, and other testimonials from people to prove that it's good. And they still argue until they're blue in the face because they're so fucking brainwashed by their stupid fucking $100,000 education system. Cause God, or education. Because God forbid... They could admit that they wasted their fucking money. Okay? They wasted their fucking money. So that's it, people. Okay? How to start the steak diet. That's it. That's it. The kidney drink, I'll hit that real quick. And then I'm wrapping this up. The kidney drink. It's there to cool down your fucking kidneys. Okay? This idea has been around for fucking ever. Ever. Okay? Baking soda. It fucking alkalizes the fuck out of your body. And it brings the pH up on your kidneys. Especially this is more for this is for long dry fasts. Okay? Because you'll create a fairly acidic situation in your kidneys. It's not unhealthy, but you'll start breaking stones loose when you dry fast. Okay? That's why you'll get some kidney pain. You're actually getting rid of shit. So then you, you pound back that kidney drink. And the way I mixed it up is because I don't want people to fuck their teeth up. You go with like a half a teaspoon of baking soda, a couple tablespoons of vinegar, and some lemon juice. Like it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, you can even go with one teaspoon of fucking baking soda and, and two tablespoons. You know, just get it in. Okay? And then if you go buy some urine strips, I got to do another YouTube on this. You can check your piss. If you're coming off a hardcore dry fast, you, and even when you're snake juice fasting and you're not getting in any baking soda, you'll urinate and you'll see it's really acidic. Okay, but you knock back some of that baking soda, fuck a few hours later, you'll start pissing and you'll see that your fucking urine is fucking, has a higher pH than seven. Okay, it, it cools down your kidneys, cools down your kidneys and it'll also help break down fucking kidney stones. Okay, that's how it works. That's why this is fucking common knowledge if you look it up. And it's actually funny, there's this fucking asshole that hates me that runs a dry fasting group and he's like, he still doesn't get that I motivate people to not fucking eat. And he's trying to say that I stole his ideas and shit. Fuck me. Fuck. Basically, he had stones was his story. And a guy told him to take baking soda. But it, the, I got it actually from a woman on the internet from like 2009. That fuck was talking about baking soda, apple cider vinegar shot for fucking kidneys. That's it. It's like if you just go read. like, And how do you think I figured it out? Because when I was dry fasting, I got some kidney pain. And I started reading into it. And then I was pissing up a bunch of kidney stones. Because my fucking kidneys, I was kicking all this shit out from years of fucking bad diet. And that's what happened. I Actually, it was funny. When I very first started dry fasting, I did a five-day dry fast. Black fast, so no water contact. Then I went into a dry fasting routine where I was dry all day and eating a bunch of fruit at night. I was on a meal a day routine with a dry fast all day. See if I could maintain my body weight while still eating a pile of fruit. Which the only way I could eating a pile of fruit was with the dry fasting. But then, sure as shit, my kidneys started hurting one night. 
And then the next morning, it must have been all the citrates and shit from the fruit that I was eating. But the next morning, I pissed out like fucking just a pile of white shit. I, I actually pissed out a bunch of shit when I was doing that dry fast bacon experiment too. I pissed out some little stones and I pissed in a cup. And then I put it in the fridge for a day and then I dumped all the piss off the top and it was like literally like fucking crystals. Like this is the fucking kidney pain, okay? Because you're fucked up. So not that the fasting isn't causing... Well, yeah, the fasting, the detox effects are causing the pain, but it's not because of the fucking shit. It's not because of the fasting because your fucking kidneys are full of shit. Okay, your kidneys are full of fucking shit. Okay, same with people that are breaking out and fucking any rash. Like, you're not eating anything, especially if you're dry fasting. You're not eating anything. You're not allergic to fucking air, are you? If you were, you'd be dead. Okay? All that shit. Detox, detox, detox. You're fucking... All your fucking bullshit coffee. All your fucking cigarettes. All your drugs. All the chemo meds that you've fucking been on. All the chemo meds for HIV that you don't even fucking got. All the fucking HIV scams out there that doesn't even fucking exist. Fucking HIV is another joke. I made a whole video about that. Okay? It's all detoxing. It's all detox. You don't need anything but what the fucking good Lord gave you. I'm not even religious, but that's the truth. You don't need nothing. You don't need nothing but a good, clean water source, good, clean food, fucking fast your ass off, and fucking get good sleep. Never get sick. Every time I even get fucking a, a hint of sickness because I'm up all fucking night coaching people, and I feel it coming on, I drive fast for 48 hours, I'm fucking good to go. I'll beat anything. Sometimes I'll do a garlic dry fast, I call it, where I'll eat like a whole fucking garlic bulb and then I'll go into a 48 hour dry fast and I'll tell you that's fucking hardcore shit. Okay? Like we got, like I got a, fuck, I know somebody that he has, like if you want to talk about candida overgrowth, like I got people that fucking do crazy experiments for me even now that are really fucked up. Okay, I got people that, you know, they're pounding fucking, uh, uh, what is it now? Shit. Straight fucking poison. Well, so borax is one. Everyone's scared shit. Let's go read up about borax. That was an interesting one because that was for basically arthritis and shit. You can start taking borax, but you got to be careful. You don't want to fucking OD on that shit. Um, the other one was uh, turpentine. Fucking organic turpentine. I've had people fucking taking that, drinking it, like to fucking kill the candida. Fucking borax. But you know, like there's... These are, this shit's cheap. Like a box of Borax is like five bucks. Okay, but just, fuck, just don't. Fuck, if you're fucking looking into doing that, you read up and fuck, I ain't giving you any info on that shit because you'll fucking fuck it up. Okay? There's a lot, all these salts are cheap. Like there is a guy that talks about the salt cure. Like these fucking salts are naturally occurring. And the problem is our food quality is bad. There's no doubt. Like the fucking ground's so bad, GMO, blah, 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 that the nutrition isn't in the food. But, as long as you're fucking, if you are getting these salts in, you'll be good to go. Okay? And like down the road when you're lean, like there is good shit. You know, there's dandelion root and all this other shit. Like these aren't bad supplements. But you've got to incorporate this shit into your fasting routine because fasting is the most important. Like I did, I was eating dandelions out of the backyard of my buddy's house when I was staying with him. Like I was going out in the backyard picking a bunch of dandelion heads and shit, throwing them fucking some butter on them and fucking eating them. Because honestly, you know, that's fucked up. God forbid that people would know how healthy dandelions are when there's dandelion fields all out in the fucking bush, like true organic dandelions, you can go pick a garbage bag full and have a fucking month's worth of fucking greens to eat. Okay, like there's, like look into the shit. The stuff that people don't like, a lot of times that's good for you. Go against the mainstream. The mainstream's doing it, it's probably shit. Okay, first thing, I talked about this before. Mainstream's doing it, it's probably shit. Try shit. Okay? Do cold baths. You know, pound back, like, just fucking do the hardest fast you can do. Take a week off of work and try to do a fucking seven day dry fast. Okay? Like, just do it. The money doesn't mean your fucking money don't mean shit. Face your fucking fear of judgment. Tell your little friends to fuck off. Okay? You know why? You'll end up saving somebody's life anyway. Because that's the thing. Starting this fucking diet. Okay? You need to fucking face your fear of fucking judgment. Or else you're going to crack. You're going to crack. And people are going to scare you. I had a guy with cancer that I was helping way back. And I helped him for a week. He was fucking feeling great. Was seeing great results. And then he just quit. Because a stupid friend scared him so bad and said he had to get on chemo. And he just did it. And of course, back then I didn't hold him accountable. I didn't make him put up fucking pictures. I didn't make him do anything. 
I just fucking, this is what I, I was excited about helping somebody with th this type of cancer. So I was just giving them this help. Then I wasted my fucking time. That's why I will not ever, ever help somebody that doesn't fucking put up pictures. And I will not take their money because then they got me by the balls. And then I can't be a fucking asshole, which gets me the best fucking fat loss and health results on the face of the fucking planet. So everyone have a great night. Subscribe to my fucking YouTube channel. Okay, fucking hit all the videos. Leave comments on the videos. Call me a fucking asshole even on the videos. That's like, that's like my only income right now. And I'm, I think I'm making 500 fucking dollars. 500 fucking dollars. Like, you know what made me mad the other day? Some stupid fucking asshole. They're like, somebody said I don't charge money for my help. Yeah, I don't charge. Then someone's like, yeah, but he makes money off his fucking YouTube channel. I can punch these people in the fucking face. It's like, fuck. And then the, the, this fucking lady's like, well, that's how he gets you. Yeah, I'm getting you by you fucking subscribing to my YouTube channel for fucking free, you stupid cunt. And you're fucking watching my fucking videos. Fuck, I swear to God, man, I'd fucking slap that person right up the side of the fucking head up there in front of me. Fuck, I help people for fucking free and they can't even subscribe to my fucking YouTube channel. You know, fuck. Anyway, everyone have a great night. And get that fat in ya!